ladies and gentlemen, after our last interview, bringing back my enthusiasm about the blockchain, I want to bring on Spike Cohen, of course, Libertarian Party nominee for vice president. <laughs> I never lost any enthusiasm. I've been having a lot of fun with hashtag let her speak this weekend. Oh, yeah. The libertarian love train. Hashtag no libertarian under 1K. It's been a lot of fun. But if anybody in the Adder versus the Man audience has any lagging enthusiasm about campaigning in 2020, Spike Cohen is going to fix that. Am I right, Spike? That's what I'm here to do, Adam. How are you doing? Outstanding, as you can tell. Spike, I don't know. What? what I, I, whatever you want to start with, you know, I have some questions here, things I want to cover, but of course the platform is yours. What do you want your fans and supporters in the Adam versus the man audience to know about what's going on with your campaign right now? Well, first of all, thanks for having me on. And, uh, I just want to say that, uh, getting a phone call. Anyway, I just like to say that, uh, this is what happens when you have everything connected to your Bluetooth at the same time. Uh, so we are blowing through all of our benchmarks, uh, when it comes to our fundraising benchmarks, when it comes to our volunteer benchmarks, when it comes to our polling benchmarks and everything else, uh, just general engagement benchmark benchmarks, we're blowing through them. I talk to people across this country and I hear over and over the same thing. This is the most excitement that they have felt for and seen uh, others feeling, uh, for a presidential campaign since at least the 1990s and possibly ever. Um, and it makes sense why. I mean, we are in a in a uniquely dystopian situation between COVID-19 and the lockdowns and the protests because of uh, growing police brutality and increasingly out uh, unaccountable and militarized police states, the wars overseas that never end and and the, the massive skyrocketing cost of health care to, to benefit a handful of billionaire cronies who've created a, a regulatory regime to make sure that our, our health care costs continue to skyrocket out of control for the direct reason that eventually they'll just be able to take it over at the government level. All all of these things are leading to an increasing number of Americans who are so sick of this government and everything that comes from it, not just from the Republicans and not just from the Democrats, but from the entire Republicrat apparatus that they've created, that they're sick of it and they want their power back. And that's what Joe and I are going to do. And we're seeing that excitement every single day when we're out campaigning. Spike, you seem to be slurring your words, not connecting your ideas and spouting propaganda. Have you taken a cognitive test lately? Uh, no, but I'd be happy to, and I'm not going to accuse you of being a junkie because you asked me. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, no, I'd be happy to, I, I will say uh, woman basketball TV as many times as they want me to, to show that I'm fully here. Uh, I have no problem with that. I think it's a weird, here's, here's this, and I'm glad you brought this up. So here's the situation we're in. We have one candidate who is like walking around going, look, I said basketball when I was asked to. I'm ready to leave this country for another four years. And then you got the other one going, how dare you even ask me if I'll do that, you junkie or whatever. You, like, I mean, and and this is our, it's, it's a perfect microcosm of our choices. We have one person and it, 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 it which one is the one who fails and which one is the one that's, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, celebrating that they aren't a total failure? Uh, it changes spaces, uh, places from from subject to subject. But you literally have a competition between someone who's like, I'm barely competent. Vote for me. And then the other one saying, I refuse to answer whether or not I'm competent. And this is I mean, this is our choices. And then between them, we have Joe Jorgensen. We have a a, a, a brilliant, accomplished, self-made entrepreneur who is able to articulate exactly how the Republicrats have created this problem, the problems that we're facing, and how our common sense libertarian solutions, ones that you talk about on this show and ones that we talk about when we're out campaigning, uh, and that uh, down-ballot candidates across the slate in every single state in this country are talking about every day, that these are the solutions to the problems that they have created and made worse. And I, I'm very excited about where this is going to take us. So I, I raised this idea directly with, with Joe when we, we were chatting offline uh, mm -hmm. about the cognitive tests. And you know, one of the ways that I came up with that we could we could leverage this is with a with a challenge. We could start a super PAC, raise as much money as we want. We say we're gonna, you know, host an objective cognitive test. We'll have, you know, a Republican and a Democrat. I tried to get Roger Stone on board with this. He's like, I'm not your Republican for that. But we can get a Republican <laughs> and a Democrat. Uh, you know, and, and myself on, on board with a super PAC. And by the way, at the point it becomes a super PAC, I'm not allowed to coordinate. You're not allowed to say anything. But I'll, I'll, I'll get the idea. You'll see where this is going. I was just going to say, when you're telling me this idea, I'm like, I'm going to have to just say, if you want to run with this, right, you can. Right, right, right. <laughs>
if you want to take a cognitive test in a way that really embarrasses the other candidates, blink three times. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, but no, obviously we're, 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 we're in the realm of like just brainstorming this idea. There's right, no, right, legal, right. we see the legal barrier in the distance of, course, of, of course. And we're, we're respectful of that as dumb as it is. I, I will um, say the idea of having three candidates take a cognitive test and whichever one does the best gets all the money. I think that just in the abstract, that's a fantastic idea. Yes, now, if you well, decide to do it, I can never talk to you again. But if right. you... <laughs> well, we can accomplish it with, with uh, I mean, with, with a super PAC where the super PAC just says, we're going to take all of the money we raise. We're not going to give it to the candidate. Right. We're not all we're going to do. We're not going to give it to a charity of their choice. No, no, none of that. All we are going to do is use that money to broadcast the results. Win, lose, or draw, whatever they are. We're just, you want to you know you're how just, smart your yeah, presidential you're just candidates saying are? Who won. You're just saying who won the test or, or what the results yeah. were of the test. Listen, we're past cognitive tests when it comes to Joe. She got bitten by a freaking bat on her way to the airport. <laughs> And did not skip a beat, okay? She goes, she's bitten by a bat. She goes, I think I may have been bitten by a bat. Oh, well, off to Pittsburgh. And then she goes, flies to Pittsburgh, takes her first uh, her first in a series of, of rabies vaccines. And meanwhile, she's feeling fine. We have no reason. Uh, oh, Chris, thank you. Uh, I'm so happy to hear about Maryland. And we have some, uh, I, I don't know if the press release is out, but we have a press release coming out about another state that we were wondering about uh, that we, uh, well, anyway, I'll let the press release come out, but we have some other ballot access related news that everyone's going to be happy about. Uh, I believe it's today that it's coming out. I may have already said too much, but anyway, uh, so Joe, she gets bitten by a bat. She goes, I think I may have been bitten by a bat. Let's get to Pittsburgh. And so she goes, they get in the plane. They're on, they're on their way to Pittsburgh without skipping a beat. She goes and, uh, and gets her first in a series of rabies vaccines. So I guess it's like over the course of several days, you have to get these vaccines. So she gets the first one and then she's off to, off to the races with her event. So I think there was like one that one of her events that had to be rescheduled or something like that. Cause she was bitten by a bat. So, I mean, this is the kind of woman that we are looking at to be the next president. This is someone that a wild animal attacks her and she's like, do I guess I'll need a shot for that. Where's the next event? Like this is yeah, this I is mean, the kind it, of grit that we have in the, at the top of the ticket. If it happened to Donald Trump, he wouldn't stop. He wouldn't shut up on Twitter. He would about not how shut the, up about. That was a demo. We couldn't. We couldn't talk. You just play the victim card. We couldn't talk about anything else. If it was Joe Biden, he'd probably feign as the bat was approaching him. But yeah, this is. A, oh, a it huge would be the problem. bat. No, if it were Joe Biden, if he'd be like grab the bat and start sniffing it or something, and Donald Trump <laughs> would go into his bunker and we wouldn't hear from him for like a month, and he would deny <laughs> that he was bitten by a bat, even though there's video footage of him getting bitten by a bat and, and get caught up in his hair and all that. And then, but he's you know, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It's fake news about the bat. Our candidate gets bitten by a bat, and it's like gets brushed off like she has the cheat code. And she's just like, okay, let's go on to the next thing. This is the, now we briefly talked about me getting maybe like scratched by a, a pangolin in solidarity, but I, I don't think we're going to do that. Um, it's actually illegal. Um, but so no, I know. I mean, she's fantastic. Like, I mean, you you look just the sheer grit of of, of someone to, like that to happen, and they yeah. just brush it off like it didn't even happen. Yeah. And then she mentions it like a week later as an afterthought. Oh, by the way, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do this event um, because I have to get my uh, rabies vaccine for the day because I was. Oh, because by the way, I was bitten by a bat. Whatever. Like, yep. <laughs> oh. Okay. I didn't even know about it. Like that's how not a big deal it was to her that it was just like, yeah, bit by a bat. Whatever. You know that, that things happen. So Hashtag, yeah, now it's everywhere. Hashtag Batwoman. <laughs> so, so, so Spike, I I understand. Uh, one way or another, yeah. If it, if if it is by super PAC, we we. As soon as we put ink to paper on this, we can't do anything that would that would cross that line of coordinating spending. But whether mm -hmm. it's this idea or not, I, I really do hope that you and and Joe and the movement can can capitalize uh, on on this. This is a really strange situation that we find ourselves in, and it's not just that we have the advantage of having a female for all the people who want to play mm -hmm. identity politics, you know, bullshit. It, but it's in the face of a contrast to two men who have been uh, offensive in their sexual conduct. Like, yeah, well, and that's the thing. So it's not just that she's a woman. It's that you have two right. possible slash probable rapists and a woman who also is, who is, has no allegations. Well, you know, of rape Spike, against her. Spike, I, I want to, you know, I don't even want to bring in the R word for not just triggering people, 
But like he suspected, no. Well, I don't. I don't care what suspected. It doesn't matter. Look at what we actually factually we know, know yep. Yep. about yep. what they have said and done and admitted to in public. And and I mean, at, at some point, you see enough of these little videos of what Biden does sniffing kids' hair. There's the one where he moves the girl's hand to his crotch, and yep. you're just like. No, 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 no. There's and no, that's, there's no, there's no excuse. But and I don't even, he, it's not even that. It's that they're both freaking incompetent at this point. <laughs> like verbally, they just they, 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 like Donald Trump. He, like you might four years ago, he was good. Four years ago, he was clever. Even you know, he really talked. He was he was good. You got to admit, four four years of being president or whatever, three and a half now. He is he is he is he's lost a lot. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's a lot. Biden. Of can't put sentences together. Yeah. How? Uh, oh, we can we get, can we just get a, a side by side objective cognitive test? Well, and that's the thing. It's like you know, here you have someone that doesn't have videos of them making children really, really uncomfortable in public. Keep in mind, this is what he does with children with in news cameras public, everywhere on camera in front of their parents. Like yes. But that's what. But this is what being unaccountable leads to. When you have had a, decades of being able to do whatever it is you want with anyone, both on the micro level directly with them and on the macro level of doing it to an entire nation or doing it to other foreign countries in the form of your war policy or whatever else, you reach a point where you're like, I can do whatever I want. There's there's a good chance that he wouldn't act any differently whether the cameras are there or not because he's just that unaccountable at this point. And that's what unaccountability leads to. And that's why people like this need to be toppled. We need to dismantle them and the systems they've created. And we need to put the power back in the hands of the people where it always belonged so that we don't have to live under the rule of sociopaths, people that that uh, you know, rub elbows with someone to the, the likes of Jelaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein as just some casual thing like, oh, yeah, we're kind of friends with this pedophile rapist who has an island for raping children. And, you know, there may or may not be proof that we were involved. In it. But like, I mean, the fact that you'd even be associating in the same circles as someone like that just demonstrates that these people don't care what anyone thinks, because in their mind, they have convinced everyone you have two options. And we're both like this. So you can't even factor the, the fact that we're scumbags in. You can't factor the fact that we're incompetent in. You can't factor in the fact that we can barely form a coherent sentence between the two of us at this point because we're both that way and you have to pick one of us. That is why the whole vote thrown away narrative is so crucial to them. Because if they can convince people that, yeah, maybe those other sides sound better or whatever, but really you're just throwing your vote away. That's why we need to get Joe on the debate stage because that completely rips away all of that. That is the emperor has no clothes moment. When you have Joe up there in between these two fools who are so emblematic of everything that is wrong with government at, at, the, at the federal level, it's going to be a no-brainer. Not only is it, is it going to be obvious that she's not a vote thrown away, but it's going to be obvious that voting for them is a vote thrown away, that she's the only competent one up there. She's the only one who's ready to lead right now. So I think it is absolutely crucial to have her up there. And uh, and then our, our, our message jumping off of that, of, of our actual candidacy, is the message behind our candidacy, which is that you are the power. We are going to put the power back in your hands. We aren't going to engage in this absurd theater that we're somehow better than you and should have control over your lives because we've seen what that has led to. You have put people in power and, and, and they have taken more and more of your power and your wealth and your freedom and it has led to increasingly harmful and abusive and inequitable outcomes. And the way that we end that is by dismantling the systems and putting the power back in your hands. Beautifully said. Now we're going to take some comments from the audience after a minute here, but I got one more question I got to ask. What's been the most rewarding part of the campaign so far? Oh, that's an easy one. Seeing the look on people's faces. It's actually a two-part thing. Seeing the look of hope in people's faces. When I've gone to Black Lives Matter rallies, when I've gone to protests, when I've gone to just going out and talking to people at like parks and, and going out to college campuses and things like that, and seeing that aha moment. When they realize that they here, you have to consider these are folks that are often hopeless and think that no one part of the when you reach a point where you're actually protesting in the streets and don't care if stuff gets burned down, it's because you're in this dystopian thing where it's like no one cares about us, no one in power cares about us. All we can do is agitate till someone demonstrates they care. And when someone shows up and says, We are the third largest political party in this country, we fully empathize and understand your ideas, and we have been fighting 
for the things you're pushing for for ne for nearly 50 years now and this is our opportunity to do that and to see that aha moment that's why we're getting endorsed by local black lives matters groups that have never even heard of libertarianism we got one endorsement and they said we vote for uh spike cohen and george jorgensen and the liberation party they would never even heard of libertarian <laughs> right by the way liberation party would be a great rebranding if we ever decided to go that route but so here we have it where to see that look on their faces where it's like oh wow someone really does care about us and we have a real option and then the second part to that is seeing the looks on the eye the on the faces of the activists the libertarian activists who they're on fire for our beliefs and they know that they're the right ideas but they feel hopeless because we often don't win and certainly not at the higher levels we don't win and 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 having them think will we ever win and then when i'm able to show them yeah we will win and here's how we're going to do it here's how we can meet people where they are and empathize with them and reflect back that we're listening and then take them on the journey to how liberty is the way forward see that look on their faces when i would you know go to a black lives matter rally and get their endorsement and have them have their aha moment and then i turn around and i see all the activists and other and down ballot candidates who went with me have their aha moment that this is how we do it that is i'm the most alive i've, I've ever felt and it is because of that it is because of seeing people wake up and realize this really is going to happen we can fix this that's awesome so jim we have comment jim freedom in phoenix looking at our comment stream He's been putting up some great stuff, just running commentary. But Jim, do we have any that you'd like to see Spike respond to or questions? All right, CJ, our producer asks, Spike, what will it take for you to get on the vice presidential debate stage? So the way that we do that is, is the same way to get Joe on the debate stage. We have to get 15% or more in five uh, opinion polls and what they call reputable opinion polls. So like Gallup and like all of the, all of the, yeah, reputable opinion polls, all of the, the, the randomly selected scientific polls. So like any of the major news outlet polls, New York Times, Fox News, CNN, uh, you know, all the people that have a vested interest in keeping us out of the debates. But, um, but if we can get 15% or more, uh, that gets on gets us on the debate stage. Now, in 2016, Gary Johnson and Bill Weld got pretty close. They got 13% in one and 11% in two others. Well, what's happened in the last four years? The American people are more outraged at government than they've been in the modern era, at least in our lifetimes, uh, possibly in the, in the last two centuries. And the other thing that's happened is that uh, the dying corporate TV news media that does everything they can to shut us out and not, and not pay attention to us has lost share of the overall media market. And that share has been grabbed by social media where we're far better represented and, 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 and have more of representation there. So I believe those two things combined with just the amount of energy behind this campaign uh, that we're seeing on a level that we certainly didn't see in the last cycle. And I, I believe we've never seen, but we certainly haven't seen at least since the 90s. Uh, I believe that those will be the difference that we need to get that 15%. And I think that'll get Joe on that stage. And then it's all over after that. All right. Any other burning comments? Let's see. Chris Gannon has a comment. Spike, have you felt or heard any pushback from the establishment on the campaign personally outside of ballot access? Uh, so we're kind of in stage two of Mahatma Gandhi's first they ignore you, then they make fun of or then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. We're kind of yeah. in that then they now they laugh at you. And we saw yeah. that reflected in how they covered uh, Joe getting bitten by a bat. But then what we also saw was all the people who responded to those saying, wow, someone got bitten by a bat and hit and, and, and it didn't even phase them and they continue campaigning. And then even more people went, Wait, there's a third person running? Who's this? So our our, our, our uh, uh, engagement on social media has gone up exponentially since that. And a lot of it has just been people searching for Joe, what, who's Joe Jorgensen? Hey, who's, yeah, who's this bat, yeah, who's this bat woman? And then they go on and they're like, oh, wow, this lady makes sense. This makes so much sense. These videos they're putting out make so much more sense than the garbage that we hear from the Republicans. So, um, you know, pushback, I think I think the ballot access is where they really try to get us the most because they feel like if they can keep us occupied with just even getting on the ballot in the first place, then we don't have a shot. And, and what they don't realize is that uh, two things are happening. Number one, we're winning every single one of those. And number two, we're getting earned media demonstrating that even in the midst of a pandemic and even in the midst of, a, of, a, of lockdowns because of the pandemic and people being scared to come up and sign something on a clipboard, that we're still 
busting through all of the all of the barriers and burdens they put in front of us. We're going to be on all 50 state uh, ballots. And the narrative of that will be that we are so organized that even though the Republicans and Democrats try to impose their uh, unfair double standard that they put on us and not themselves, they get automatic ballot access. That even with those barriers and burdens they put in place, even with the lockdowns that they put in place, telling us that we can't even go outside and talk to people we don't know, but also we're supposed to get thousands or tens of thousands of signatures in these in all these different states that we still were able were able to do it and we still got on the ballot. So, uh, you know, I think anytime they push back, it just gives us more leverage. Heck yeah. So beautiful to hear all of that. All right. One last one. Uh, T, uh, 1054. The duopoly has no idea how to deal with a dirt less candidate, especially one with what are they called? Oh, yeah. Actual principles. I think that's a great comment to end on here, Spike, if you have any yeah. thoughts on that. But I also want to ask, you know, for volunteers, what can people do to help the campaign right now? Yeah, What's abs the priority? Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. No, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, they, what are they going to put on us that, you know, I took my shirt off once? It's terrible. <laughs> Like that's literally what they have for me. He took his shirt off once and he he talks about cheesy bread. That's like the worst thing they have about me. And I can't wait till they ask me, how can someone take you seriously when you once took your shirt off? And I'll say, well, when I took my shirt off, I didn't also murder people around the globe. And I didn't put tens of millions of Americans in a cage. And I, I didn't rob Americans of tens of trillions of dollars in taxation and inflation through the Federal Reserve. I just took my shirt off. So I would say that my act of not doing those things puts me head and shoulders above the two uh, the, the, the the two numpty dumps to either side of me right now. Um, See, so I, 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 I don't know, silly me, I would have gone to when I took my shirt off, I wasn't sniffing any kids or grabbing any pussies. Also hey, true. Yeah, you, want to, you want to go with the serious answer, that works. <laughs> You know, the substantive stuff like sniffing kids. No. So uh, if you like what you heard, you want to join our team and you haven't already, we'd love to have you uh, go to J-O-2-0. That's Joe20. There it is right there. Joe20.com. And uh, you can fill out our volunteer form. We'd love to have you if uh, join our team. If you're able to make a donation, we'd greatly appreciate it. But more importantly, join our team. I like this. I like where someone's actually doing the thing and while I'm talking about. But also, you know, uh, join our team. Uh, get involved. Uh, uh, sign up for our volunteer form. Join your local and state Libertarian Party affiliates. Go to lp.org. Sign up for the Libertarian Party. Then go and look for your affiliates in your states right there on their website on lp.org. Look for your state and local affiliates. We are building a grassroots army for human liberty, fighting for a world set free in our time. And our time is right now. Couldn't have said it better myself. Ladies and gentlemen, Spy Cohen, Libertarian Party nominee for Vice President on the Trail with Dr. Joe Jorgensen. We're going to have her join us in a few weeks as well. Very oh, exciting. Come, sorry. To help in this way. I'm sorry. I, had, I forgot to plug my events. So on Friday night in Manassas, Virginia, I'm going to be at the Eavesdrop Brewery. Come out and, and say hi to me. Then on the 15th, I'm going to be at uh, in Gore, Virginia for Anarchon. I'll be speaking there, doing the keynote there. And then also on the 15th at the state capitol in Richmond, I'll be speaking at the Black Lives Matter, Black Guns Matter, Get the Strap Rally. Uh, and I'll be there. Maj Ture will be there. Many others will be there. And we're going to be blowing the roof off. Well, I shouldn't say if we're going to blow the roof off the state house, but we're going to blow the figurative roof off the state house. I don't know, but yeah, we're going to be we're going to be there talking about gun rights and all sorts of other stuff as well. And so that should be good. We'd love to have you there. And then starting on the nineteenth, I'm doing a three week bus tour all through the western states, uh, starting in Cincinnati. We'll be putting out more details because we're still working out the specifics there. Starting in Cincinnati, ending in Seattle. But yeah, on the fr uh, Friday the fourteenth, uh, five thirty at uh, the Eavesdrop Brewery, come out and hang out with me. I'd love to have you. And thank you again for having me on. Hey, thank you so much for your time today, Spike. I know you got a packed schedule. Keep up oh, the yeah. great work. Thank you, man.